Welcome back to Money Talk Radio. I'm Ellis Martin. Today I'm joined by John Bay and Sean Hillaker of Standard Uranium. Mr. Bay is the CEO of the company and Mr. Hillaker is the Vice President of Exploration for this uranium company. Standard Uranium trades on the TSX Venture Exchange under the symbol STND and in the U.S. on the OTC as STTDF. Standard Uranium is a Canadian junior exploration and project generator company looking to make the next big discovery in the Athabasca Basin region of northern Saskatchewan, Canada. With a proven track record of high-grade uranium discovery and a portfolio of over 209,000 acres of highly prospective land across the Athabasca Basin, the company's exploration team is focused on finding the fuel to power a clean energy future. Their flagship Davidson River project is located in the heart of the Patterson Lake Uranium District in the southwest Athabasca Basin, an area ripe with potential for further uranium discoveries. With only a handful of holes drilled on the project, Standard Uranium has only just begun to scratch the surface of what the property holds. The company will continue advancing its Athabasca properties through JV-funded exploration on non-core projects and focused drilling campaigns on the Davidson River project as they search for the next big Canadian uranium discovery, building toward our clean energy future. John, Sean, welcome to the program. Great to visit with you today. Hey, thanks for having us, Ellis. Great to be part of your show today. Give us an overview of the company. I understand you are in Saskatoon, Saskatchewan right now. You're getting ready to go out into the field. Tell us about Standard Uranium. Yeah, thanks. We are in Saskatoon today, and we are a Saskatchewan-based uranium exploration company. All our projects, 11 of them, are in the Athabasca Basin. We are a Canadian junior uranium exploration company that has transitioned to a project generator model as well as an exploration company. I was going to ask you about that. It's a very good model to have where you get the JV partners to come in and do most of the spending for exploration and development. And that's what you've done, haven't you? Exactly. So we transitioned last summer. We made the announcement we were making the shift and we have gone through the process of signing four deals in the past four to six months here. Ellis, it's quite a good model. Ours is quite unique. I'm going to let Sean tell you a bit about what makes our JV model and exploration project generator model different than some of our peers. Okay, go ahead, Sean. Yeah, sounds good. We've been fortunate enough here at Standard Uranium to build out a really competent, young, and hungry exploration team and technical team. So that's something that a company of our size often doesn't really boast, Ellis. So we've been really fortunate to secure a lot of young talent over to Standard Uranium, and that's what sets us apart from other project generators, is we have the expertise in-house and the team to make these JV deals turnkey operations. So we stake the land on the cheap, do a little bit of work to get drill targets ready, and we have the team to operate everything. Not only do we vend the project out and create that opportunity in the basin, but we can actually run everything and have all the relationships in place to make that happen, being the vendors, the First Nations, and the technical side of things. When I met you in Washington, D.C. about a week and a half ago, I noticed that, Sean, you are quite young, comparatively, at least to me. I won't say anything about John. <laughs> and what I know about young VPXs, Vice Presidents of Exploration and Geologists, that are smart is the energy level that you need to be out in the field. I could not do as a geologist what you can do. And it's really because of energy and stamina. And there's a lot to be said for that. And you brought it up. I'm deferring back to you on that. Am I right? You're absolutely right. And it's not only the physical aspect in the field, but just it's the mental game as well. It's a lot going on when, like John said, we've got 11 projects we're moving forward. We have a great pipeline of everything from green fields to drill ready. And we've delivered on that now. So now not only do we have lots of things going on behind the scenes, getting our next deals done and focus on our flagship, but we've got four drill programs on four different projects in a single year, which is pretty outstanding for a company of our size. Like you said, speaks to the stamina of myself and our team and our resolve to really drive these things forward and deliver on creating value added opportunities for us and our shareholders, right? But we're not going to make this into a billion dollar company without getting out there and taking shots on goal. So we've got a ton going on and we're really happy and up to the challenge to do it. That's a really big number, a billion dollar company. I don't doubt your success in that area, by the way, but I am extremely impressed with the fact that you've put together four deals within four to six months. I've not seen that. I've seen a lot of deal flow happen, but not quite at that level. How would you account for that? Is it the sector itself? Is it your 
aggressiveness? Is it your reputation and John's years in the business? Let me walk you through how we did it, Ellis. Number one, we were fortunate enough to be in a hot uranium market. And I can say we've been in this game for seven years now. So when the market turns, you have to be ready to move quickly. And we've done that by getting all our projects ready. As Sean mentioned earlier, our projects are different than other uranium companies. These are turnkey operations. When we put a project up for a JV, all the other company has to do is show up with money and be good people. And we can get a deal done because we do everything for them. We get the permits done before the JV deal is done. We have the First Nations Agreement signed. We have the vendors, the drillers, the helicopters all lined up. We have good projects and we have the team that actually runs the project from start to finish. So all they need to do is show up, be good people, and we can execute a deal and, and be drilling. The last deal we did, the Atlantic project with ATCO, we met them in January. We signed the deal within four weeks and we were drilling one week later. That is remarkable. It certainly is remarkable. So you're saying it's your team that's doing all the work for the JV partner. That is correct. And we get paid 10 to 12% of the exploration project to do that. So it's a win for us. We get our team of geos out there in the field working and we drive more cash into the company. So you're able to execute quite quickly then? The answer is potentially yes, because we have everything lined up. There's a lot of technical teams coming in that might know uranium, they might be brilliant geos, but if they don't have the relationships with the vendors, with the government personnel, with the First Nations, they're not going to get things done and programs completed as quickly as we can because we do have all those boxes checked. In a sense, the answer is yes, we can. Now, I'm very familiar with the Athabasca, but let's pretend that our audience doesn't really know it that well, and they're hearing about it for the first time. And since there are generalists, not just in the mining sector, but the investment world, looking at uranium, looking at clean energy for the first time, why is the Athabasca in Saskatchewan so important? Great question. Not only do we have the highest grade uranium on the planet, we're talking 100x, lots of times even more than that than the global average. But the jurisdiction itself is extremely attractive. The Fraser Institute repeatedly ranks us in the top three globally for mining jurisdiction and operational jurisdictions. So it, not only that, but we've got an extremely skilled workforce in the north. Most folks are very pro-mining. We've got a brilliant set of schools and education here as far as mining goes. And the Athabasca Basin is one of only a handful of these kind of special proterozoic basins that are really affiliated with high-grade uranium. It's very impressive. There's a couple other analogs globally being the Thelon Basin. There's the basins over in Australia around the Alligator Rivers area that can be analogs, but nothing can touch the Athabasca Basin as far as high quality mineral assets go, especially with uranium. So it's just a serendipitous and fortuitous circumstance, geologically speaking, that we have this in northern Saskatchewan. It's really quite impressive when you look at it and compare the mineability and grades and economics of the deposits that we have in Saskatchewan versus anywhere else in the world. I like to say ore deposits are Mother Nature's mistakes. There should never be that much metal concentrated in one area, but when the conditions are right, that's what you get. So it's really a combination of the geological time and conditions set up in the center of Canada that really produced this wonderful asset that we have in our backyard. We saw several years ago, I'm not sure if it's 10 years ago or 12 years ago, just before Fukushima, we saw a cycle where some of the uranium companies in the junior space got taken out. Uranium was on a run. We don't have those particulars in the arena right now. Thank God there's no Fukushima looming anywhere, not that we know of, and we need this energy. Uranium is the cleanest form and the cheapest form of energy that you can possibly find. Are some of the end users sniffing around or some of the big boys coming around and taking a look and watching what you're doing or some of the mid-tier companies? What's your exit strategy if there is one? And I'm sure there is one. That's an interesting question. We're not seeing the, the big players like the chemicals sniffing around. They seem to have more than enough projects and more than enough land, and they don't seem to have any interest in taking out any juniors at this point. There are rumors that their uh, big oil companies are circling some players to potentially have that entrance into the uranium space. There will be some M&A happening on the mid-tier level. We're starting to see some of that happen across Canada already. But for a company of our size and the company of our peers who are the sub-20 million market caps, we haven't seen that occur yet. 
but I can imagine we're very attractive with the number of projects we have. And should we make a discovery in one of our drill programs, we're probably going to be a huge target on our back for a takeout. Now, that's not our exit strategy. Our exit strategy is to make a discovery and really drill it out and turn it into a resource and see how big we can get it and then sell that project off to a larger player. Our flagship project, Davidson River, sits just to the southwest of NextGen's aero deposit. Now, most of us know it, and some new to the space are hearing that NextGen is building a mine and a mill there just about to start this year. So should they get that built in the next few years and we make a discovery on Davidson River, we're a huge takeout target, which is a great exit for our shareholders. And we've seen that before, but you're not looking for any exit at this share price. You're counting on the market to perform and then it'll become more attractive perhaps for you to let go of something. Yeah, exactly. And the way we built the company now with 11 projects, we've set each project up individually that we can do deals and get those done. And we can potentially sell off project by project, which would be ideal for us. We know that one big discovery hole and our share price is pretty much a 10x overnight. We've seen it happen with multiple of our peers in the last few years, so it's a real possibility. Real opportunity for potential shareholders with any of these project takeouts down the road. Exactly, and one of the big things to think about is if you're looking at investment opportunity, you want to look at companies that are actually doing the work, not companies sitting on their hands not getting things done. We've got four drill programs on four different projects. Our shareholders are going to see massive opportunity to see drilling going on continuously for the next four to five months. And on top of that, news flow. Every drill program we're doing, we're putting out news flow after news flow with interviews and the social media posts with videos from site and updates from our results and analytical results. So lots of news flow coming, which is great for our shareholders. What's going to be happening with regard to the rest of this year, this summer, with your 2024 drill program. I think you've just started that with the Canary Project. That's correct. So we've actually already completed one drill program this year. So we kicked the year off with our Atlantic project, which is also over on the east side of the basin, very close to ISO Energy's hurricane deposit, which is essentially the highest grade resource that's undeveloped right now on the planet, with the average grade being above 30% U308, which is bonanza type grades, right? So that's exactly what we're looking for over on these east side projects. We've been fortunate to get these deals done, and now we're getting to drill them for the first time. So we've put a lot of groundwork into these projects, like John was mentioning, staking them back in 2019, 2020, before the big rush came in. And we've really positioned ourselves well with some really good pieces of land. So we've been pushing these forward, doing some groundwork, doing some geophysics and getting these drill ready over the last couple of years. Now that they are drill ready, we've done these deals on them. And so now we get to go explore them and continue the news flow and take these shots on goal for potential discoveries. So we started the year off with Atlantic. That was a one drill program, about a month long and drilled over 3,300 meters. So we finished that on time, under budget, five drill holes in a brand new area that we have never tested before. And we came up with sniffs of radioactivity in all five drill holes. So a smashing success, really, when you look at it. So we're really excited to continue moving that forward with our partners at Atco Mining. And then, like you said, Ellis, we just started drilling today on our Canary project, which we're partnered with Mamba Exploration. They're an Australian group. So both these companies I mentioned, they both have the option to earn up to 75% in these projects over the next three years. So these first pass drill programs will satisfy their year one earn in requirements. So this one we just started and that'll take about a month to complete as well. So that'll take us into early June. So look for some more news flow as we continue to progress that program as well as get our final results back from Atlantic. So those will be coming out here in the next few weeks. John and I are headed up to site tomorrow to kick off the program and check out the drill and see everybody up there we will already have core on the table from our first hole by the time we get up there tomorrow evening so it's going to be fantastic to get up there and see these rocks and again a brand new area that's never been tested fantastic targets that we've worked out over the last couple years after that we're up to sundog in july so that's up by uranium city we've put this into a really interesting deal with a company called aero energy so we've consolidated the Uranium City area with our Sundog project and Fortune Bay's two Uranium projects up there as well, in addition to staking some more land around that area too. So that's what we brought the band back together from NextGen on this one. Galen McNamara and Garrett Ainsworth are both involved in this, as well as myself. So we all worked together back in the day at NextGen as we were progressing Arrow towards mineability and feasibility, sorry. So yeah, that one's really exciting too. We'll get to that in July. And then we're raising some cash right now to fund David. River. That's what we want to get back to as well. We've done a lot of work in the last couple of years, haven't 
haven't been back to drill it since 2022. So we've got a pretty exciting program plan there as well. I've got to think that you are using some technology that perhaps was not used two, three, four, five years ago to mitigate a lot of risk so that when that drill hits the ground, you have an idea of what you might find. Absolutely. It gets better every year. There's uh, a pretty new hot topic that's been going around, Ellis, called ANT, so Ambient Noise Tomography, or ANT surveys. So we've seen a lot of companies picking up the mantle on that survey type. It's really interesting. It's essentially showing us and guiding us where to drill along these conductors. Pretty easy to identify your conductor trend, but where might the uranium be? We've got 70 kilometers or more of conductors on Davidson River, for example. So how do we vector in to put that drill where we can increase and de-risk the project to save us those drill holes on vectoring in. So this is a new technology we've been looking at, and we've actually done some AI and machine learning based on the data. So comparing known footprints of deposits in the area, using the same data sets over our project to exactly pinpoint where we want to go next. So we've done a lot of that in the background, and that's something we're going to continue to push with these funds that we're looking to raise. You're saving hundreds and hundreds of thousands of dollars doing it that way, I know for a fact. Potentially millions, actually. So it's exciting for us and for our shareholders as well. Tell us about the share structure of the company. That's a good time to be asking today, Alice, as we just restructured that. So we went from 230 million shares down to 46 million on a five for one consolidation today, which was something that we've been working on for the last year. It was something that some of our shareholders were asking us to do and some new entrants into the space were requiring that we did it. So look, it's depending on who you ask. Some people like a tighter share structure. Some people don't care. You look at Australian companies with a, a billion shares out and some of our peers in the basin with 500 million shares out. So look, does it look nicer to some investors? Because it does. So for us, it made sense. Let's roll it back five for one, put us now with 46 million shares out. And now we're in a spot where we can bring new investors into the space that like that structure and grow from there. I think new investors are looking for that kind of structure, period. Afraid of anything above 200 million shares. Are you cashed up for all that you need to do for the rest of the year? I know that you're getting some help from your JV partners, but what does your treasury look like? Yeah, that's a great question. So all our JV partnered programs are fully funded, and we announced a capital raise about a week ago. We are raising $3 million right now, which will fund exploration on our flagship Davidson River project, as well as help us advance our Corvo and Rocus projects. Those are two projects on the the southeast side of the Athabasca Basin that we are preparing for a 2025 a JV. And in a nutshell, why should the general public who's concerned about green energy, clean energy, look at uranium right now? I'll let you answer that question. But it is the, the billion dollar question, isn't it? People around the world are saying we need to transition away from fossil fuels. And if you're looking at clean energy, you've got a few options out there. But the one that really stands out is base load power. It's nuclear power. We can have reactors that go 24-7 all year round. And it's clean, it's fossil free, and it's never going out. John, Sean, it's been a real pleasure chatting with you about standard uranium. I look forward to our next interview. Good luck in the field. Thanks so much for joining me today in the program. Thank you, Ellis. It's been great to share this time with you today, and we look forward to you sharing our story with your listeners, and we'll talk to you again real soon. I've been speaking with John Bay and Sean Hilliker of Standard Uranium, trading as STND on the TSX Venture Exchange and STTDF in the U.S. on the OTC. Go to the company's website, standarduranium.ca, for a detailed look. For Money Talk Radio, I'm Ellis Martin. Find us at ellismartin.com.